Once upon a time, a junk man had a dream. I want to build a spaceship, go to the moon, salvage all the junk that's up there, bring it back, sell it. So he put together a team, an ex-astronaut, a fuel expert. They built a rocket ship, and they went to the moon. Who knows what they'll do next? T-minus two minutes and counting. Activate guidance, computer. Roger, control. Guidance is go. This is control. We monitor your guidance. This is Stephen Brinks, live from the Jettison Salvage Yard, the site of last month's world-famous junkyard moon launch. The homemade spaceship has now been returned to its owners by the United States government, who impounded it after purchasing its entire cargo of lunar salvage. Inside the Vulture's flight capsule are three very special people. Harry Broderick, Skip Carmichael, and Melanie Slozar. This is the team that made that historic moon flight. The team that captured the hearts and imaginations of the entire world. As evidenced by the group of military and government officials here, today is a very special day. The Vulture has been extensively refitted, and we are about to witness a brief test of the vehicle. Among the officials here is Mr. Philip Kramer of the Federal Aviation Administration. Mr. Kramer, what is the purpose of this flight? Well, certification to see if the ship is safe for flight. And is the ship eligible for certification? Well, personally, I think it's only eligible for the junk heap. But I just do what I'm told. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Kramer. We are activating guidance transfer. Where are you going to steal your guidance from this time? Uh, we don't have to steal for one. We built a miniature one that's on board. Good. What about your fuel supply? Conventional stuff. It's perfectly safe. I sure hope so, Mac. Because the FBI has got a direct line to every explosive manufacturer. And if I hear that you people are even thinking about buying monohydrazine again, do you know what? Stand by to activate control. turbo we are start. Countdown. Activate turbo starter. Turbo starter on. Okay, stand by for ignition. Roger. Five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. We have ignition. Ready for liftoff. Well, Harry, finally got control. Test complete. Recharge to 60% power. Ignition off. Roger. Master power off. Roger. Perfect. 
Yeah. The problem is there's no federal classification for this, uh... Vulture. Vulture? You know, I, I can't certify it without it being classified. You mean if you can't certify it, then they can't fly it? Not legally, no. That's too bad. Come on, Jack. How about experimental? Experimental what? Fixed wing, rotor, prop driven? What about wingspan and runway extension? I've got forms to fill out. Hey, now, wait a minute. You got a classification there for a hover machine? Hover machine? Hover machine? Hover machine, 1621A. Ha! Well, then it's a hover machine. Are you sure? Hey, you were there. You did see it hover. <laughs> so it's a hover machine. OK, experimental hover machine. You're the first one with that classification, so pick a number. One. I need some letters to go with that. Salvage. S-A-L. I know how to spell. Salvage one. Oh, All right. Right. <laughs> All right. OK, she's certified. But the conventional fuel and cement launch pads only. Right. Here you go. It'll be eight bucks and 50 cents. Eight dollars and a half. That's uh, five. A skip. A few. Oh. One, three. Case eight. And quarter. Uh, 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 Jack, could you let me have a quarter? Okay, thanks. Eight and a half. Now, look, when you activate your flight plan, be sure and call LA Departure Control 124.3. Flight plan? What flight plan? Thank you, Mr. Kramer. We appreciate it. They said Lindbergh was crazy. <laughs> right. Harry, would you like to tell me about this flight plan? Oh, nothing to worry about. Just a harmless little business venture. I've heard that before from you, Harry, remember? Oh, I'm not going to start any trouble, Jack. Trust me. Trust you? The last time I trusted you, my face was all over the late show, cheering that thing when it came back from the moon. Now, you're into me for a quarter. I want to know what you're up to. You'll think I'm kidding. Try me. OK. We're going to the South Pole, study the ice, see about the possibility of bringing icebergs back to California in case of another drought. <laughs> You're kidding. See? But you got to keep it legal, Harry. Oh, honor bright, Jack. Now, I don't like being on your case any more than you do. But Washington thinks it's important, and they don't trust you either. So you stick to your flight plan. And don't forget my quarter. Oh, sure, Jack. Got everything? Yeah. Everything we talked about. Sequencing cameras, infrared scanners, telephoto lenses. Good. <clears throat> what is that? Tranquilizer gun. Tranquilizer gun? Yeah. Hold it. Time out. We are going to the South Pole to study the ice, right? Right. Well, we're not going to land there, are we? No. No, we're going to land it here, Banza La Rova. Banza La Rova? Yeah, it's a little island there on the west coast of Africa. Has the world's largest assortment of primates. Primates? Yeah, you know monkeys. Yeah, I know what primates are, Harry. What's it got to do with us? Business. I got a purchase order from the San Diego Zoo for as many dwarf spider monkeys as we can deliver. Seems they're an endangered species, and they want to try to save them. That island's the only place where there are any left. Harry, what about quarantine laws? I mean, is it legal to bring dwarf spider monkeys into the country? I don't know, and at $30,000 a pop, I'm not asking any questions. Here's the deal. About a month ago, I get a call from a guy down at the zoo. He knew about our going to the moon. He said, if we can do that, we can sure get to Battle Rova. It's so hard to get to. Nobody's been there since Captain Cook discovered the place. Now, now wait a minute. Nobody's been there in over, what, 200 years? So that's what they said. Well, how do they know about spider monkeys? It's in the book. <sighs> I don't believe this. It's not going to cost us anything. The trip's already paid for by the iceberg feasibility study. If we find some monkeys, it's gravy. If we don't find monkeys, what have we lost? Let me see if I have this straight. 
after we do our aerial survey of the South Pole, we're just going to sneak on over to the west coast of Africa and land a 20-ton spaceship in the jungle, right? Right. Just like that? Just like that. Harry? Now, look, we designed the Vulture as an airborne cargo vessel. It's as easy to handle as a pickup truck. Should it be any more difficult to, to land in the jungle than to land at Mitchell Park? I like it. Mel? I think it's the flakiest idea I've ever heard. She likes it, too. Salvage one, this is Jettison Control, T minus two minutes and counting. Onboard fire extinguisher pressure. 280 PSI. We monitor all pressure systems go. Roger. Ready on 124.3. Salvage one to control, activate the flight plan. Roger. LA departure control, Jettison Salvage on 124.3, over. This is LA departure control, go ahead, Jettison. Please activate the flight plan for the Vulture. Vulture? Oh, I'm sorry. I mean the experimental hover machine, Salvage 1. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you cleared on an on-stop transfer of flight, junkyard to Antarctica, and return. No touchdowns along the route. Be sure and file IFR on your return through Brisbane. Roger. Oh, uh, happy hovering. Oh, thanks, Kramer. Jettison out. Ignition! Release the cables. All right, all systems are go. Ready for liftoff. Okay, Harry, it's finally your baby. Take her away. That's a Roger. to this. I don't know why you guys had so much trouble going to the moon. Give me an ETA to the Midland Ice Shelf. Five hours and 23 minutes. That should put us over the ice uh, around noon. That. Certainly nothing like those tall, jagged bergs up the North Pole. No, sir, just flat cakes of ice. Big flat cakes of ice. Oh, and we're just seeing the top of it. Almost 90% of those are underwater. That's all ice, too. No earth, just ice. <laughs> you know, some of those are just as big as the state of New York. I tell you one thing, you melt that stuff down, that's a lot of drinking water. <laughs> Moving one of those ice cubes ain't gonna be easy either. Ain't nothing easy. Got everything you need? Yeah, from up here. How about you? That's first step. One step at a time. We got a lot of work to do. Well, let's see if we can turn the old vulture around. Okay, coordinates to the junkyard. Coordinates to the junkyard? Aren't you forgetting something? I didn't forget. I was hoping you had. Okay, coordinates to Bantu Larova. There, just up ahead, there's a small clearing. Can you see it on your side? Yeah. Yeah, it looks kind of tight. Yeah, like thread the needle. You want me to take over? I'll do it. I've landed in tighter spots than that with a fixed wing. Strapped in. Rotation.
have done better myself. Okay, ignition off. Okay, open the cargo hatch. That's all you need. Skip, there's nothing here but monkeys. Little monkeys. Ah, just in case one shows up while we're gone. Set the lights? Yeah, the set come on automatically at sunset. All right. Let's check the radios. No? Gotcha. No. Got it. Skip. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Well, let's go. We're human. But, but I, I saw your spaceship. Oh, my gosh, you must have thought that we were some kind of... <laughs> I didn't know what to think. You're the first humans I've seen in over 15 years. I'm sorry. I'm just suddenly realizing how much I've missed the company of people. I'm John Goodwin. Skip Carmichael. Goodwin, I'm Melanie Sloan's Harry Broderick. Is there anybody else around? No, just me and the animals. Come, we'll go to my camp. I was teaching philosophy at Notre Dame, and suddenly it seemed as though I could no longer communicate with people. I don't mean just my students, I mean people in general. Well, of course, there was a decaying of values, a shifting of morals. It was as though there were a great overall loss of sensibility. So you switched from humans to animals? Reluctantly at first, but then more and more eagerly. I devoted my life to the study of the primates of the world. And I found them incredibly honest, open, and remarkably intelligent. And I developed a theory. I believe evolution is a continuing process. And I decided I could predict the civilization of the future if I could learn to communicate with the primates. Any luck? Enormous luck. You mean you, uh... Talk to monkeys? Actually, I don't.
This does. Would you like to see how it worked? Sure, yes. yes. I call this a prima box. Prima box. A prima, a primate box for voice. Voice of the primates. Very good. Well, she was an English miner. This machine produces a series of tones that have meaning to all the primates. Communication is a three-step procedure, as in the military. First, I get the animal's attention. Then I warn him I'm going to give him an order. And then I issue the command. Now, I'm going to ask Sylvester there to do something very simple. I'm going to ask him to get a banana and give it to the lady and then get back to his cage. Hopefully, he'll know which of you is female. <laughs> now then, first, we get his attention. Now I tell him that I'm going to give him a command. Finally, I give him the order. Is uh, Sylvester the only one who understands you? I think I've made contact with almost every primate on this island. Almost? Well, I still have a lot of problems to solve. I tell you what, why don't I show you the rest of my simian kindergarten, and then I'm going to cook you a marvelous jungle dinner. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Great. chance to talk and some dwarf spider monkeys into taking a little ride with us? <laughs> I'll see what I can do for you in the morning. You know, there is something that you could do for me right now. Oh, what's that? Where's a place where I could take a bath? Oh, there's a very nice secluded spot just the other side of the pond. Oh, good. But wait a minute. I've got a towel for you and some soap. Here we are. Oh, thank you. I made this soap myself out of banana pulp. I have to make everything myself, you know. The fuel for the generator comes from my still. I've been making alcohol out of coconuts. The light bulbs? Oh, I've been hoarding those all these years. Last link with civilization. Right. Banana soap. Thank you. Hey, Mel, scrub your back? I think I'll soak. She's crazy about me. Uh, she be safe over there? Oh, yes, certainly. There's nothing on this island can harm her.
It's all right. What was it? What was it? What? I'm sorry. I had no idea anything like that would show up. We'll forget the monkeys and get out of here. No, 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 no. You don't understand. You're in absolutely no danger. This is an occasion for rejoicing. Rejoicing? Of course. For 12 years, ever since I first saw it, I've been trying to get close. But it's afraid of me. It hides. Now I think it's ready to communicate. I believe that you and your spaceship have aroused its curiosity. Wonderful. Of course, it's wonderful. What is it? A, a big ape? Oh, no. This is a unique form of primate with extraordinarily human characteristics. Almost Neanderthal in appearance. Maybe he'll come close enough now for me to make contact. Please, I assure you the creature means you no harm. <laughs> Stand aside, Professor. No, 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 it won't hurt us. It isn't loaded anyway. Little monkeys. <laughs> it's lucky. He understands. <laughs> I'm going to tell him we're friends. He understands. He understands. No, no, no. Maybe you better let him play with it. Maybe you're right. That's not going to do much good. You got any better ideas? Yes, that light. Simians are terrified of bright lights. Oh, that's not bright enough. Can you overdrive this thing? Uh, yeah, I think so. Mel, cut that wire.
Yeah. We'll stand guard. You and Skip get that thing fixed, and let's get out of here. I thought I'd lost everything. The thing might come back. We haven't got time, Harry. I need both you on the switches. I got a leak in the reservoir I can't fix. We're gonna have just enough turbo pressure to start the engines. We gotta do it fast. Go! I don't wanna get stranded here! Okay, master power switch. Check. Ready for ignition. Yeah, OK, Mel. OK, activate the turbo start. Skip, we're losing pressure. Mayday. Mayday. Skip, 
Skipper, you all right? Hey, I don't know where I am. I'm in some kind of cave somewhere, but I don't know where. And that thing, the creature is in the entrance. Well, well, hang on. We'll get you out. Listen, Harry. Those engines are heating up. If you don't take off in 30 minutes, you're going to blow up. We're not leaving without you. Now, don't worry. We'll find you. Skip, don't talk. Just keep pressing the transmit button. I'll home in on your signal, okay? Do you have a belt? Are you wearing a belt? Yeah, Does yeah. Have a buckle. Give, give it to me quick. You want the buckle? Yes. Skip, this is Harry. Skip. Yeah, go, Harry. We found the cave. We'll get you out. Harry, listen, you got less than 20 minutes. Shut up and listen. I'm going to try to get that thing to move. As soon as he clears the cave, run. Roger. Hang on. Hey, monkey! Hey, monkey! Come here, man! I'm going to show you something. Harry, get down! Don't throw the rock. Don't throw the rock. Around, we could get on top of that rock. There's no time. I found it. I found it and it still works. I've got it set for continuous operation. All you have to do is push this lever. What kind of noise does it make? A feeding call. Let's hope that thing's hungry. Don't die. Don't. Don't, don't pick up a rock. Don't throw a rock. You go like this. You go really like this. Skip. Skip. Get ready. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready.
some dwarf spider monkeys, and they're gonna get some dwarf spider monkeys. And one of them's gonna be huge! <laughs> Certainly, Mr. Broderick. If what you're telling me can be substantiated, I'm sure we can arrange a position here for Mr. Goodwin. Perhaps even a Ford Foundation grant. The man has apparently made a major breakthrough. He has, and it can be substantiated. Can you speak a little louder? It's kind of difficult to hear you. Where are you calling from? You wouldn't believe me, Mr. Sloan. I'll have Mr. Goodwin contact you tomorrow. Well, congratulations. You and Sylvester have a new job. Mr. Broderick, I don't know how to thank you. Hey, we're even. If it weren't for you, we'd be stranded on Battle or Ova. Give me an ETA to the junkyard.
supposed to fly directly to the South Pole and back. But you haven't been on radar scope in 48 hours. You didn't contact Brisbane on your return. We sent out an entire search and rescue operation. We want to know where you've been, Harry. You're not going to believe me. Try me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.